Hey there and welcome to this week's episode of the Demasi and Michael Just Talking Tech Podcast. Now, because I'm the one editing the audio, I can come to you guys and drop little things like this in the beginning of the episode. Sorry, Demasi, I had to do it. One thing that I noticed when I went back and edited the audio is I forgot to give you guys my favorite keystroke, okay? Come on, what am I doing and what is Demasi doing not talking about this keystroke. Tell you what, I'll give you this keystroke real quick. And if you want more content about 1Password, or if you want more content about anything we've discussed in the past or anything we discuss in the future, don't forget to reach out to either one of us on Twitter. Let us know, what do you want to hear? What can we help you do? Okay, that keystroke command backslash baby command backslash will let you automatically fill in your information so let's say you're on facebook.com and you have your information saved in one password hit command backslash it'll log you in the beautiful thing it even presses the enter key for you yeah sorry to interrupt but it's time demasi and michael just talking tech Hey there, and welcome to another Demasi and Michael Just Talking Tech. This is your host, Michael, and I am the voice behind the Your Own Pay Podcast Network. It's been amazing coming to you guys every Tuesday with these Demasi and Michael Just Talking Tech Tuesday episodes. I'm joined with my awesome co-host, Demasi. Demasi, like usual, how can they find you on Twitter, and how are you doing today? Hey, I'm doing awesome today, Mike, and uh, you can, of course, follow me on Twitter at Demasi, so that's D-A-M-A-S-H-E. For those of you that still haven't got the spelling down, uh, that's where I'm at. Don't forget to leave your comments uh, on the show notes, and you can follow me at Payom, P-A-Y-O-W-N. Today, we're going to talk about 1Password, and an application that I fought forever, like some of these other applications we've talked about in these services i fought forever to get into because i'm like why do i need one password i'll just keep using my same password process like i have been uh, before we get into it i'm going to let demasi get started by explaining to you guys how one password works and what the general concept of one password though you might be able to figure out from the name is and how it's more secure than what you might already be doing now all right. So the general concept behind 1Password is Vault. And it's going to save your logins for all these different web services that we all use, Facebook, Twitter, Gmail, any web login that you have can be saved in 1Password. So that's a username and your password saved there. And it's all behind 1Password. So when you need to log in to view information or fill in information, you're going to use one master password. You use one password to generate a uh, long, secure, random password for each individual site, which makes sure that one, you're protected. You don't know your passwords, but they're saved there securely. But also it protects you mainly if, say, this site gets hacked or somebody manages to capture one of your passwords in some form or fashion. They only have that one password, so they can't go do what happens when, let's say, a Yahoo, Yahoo gets hacked or uh, any other web service has a breach of security. They have usernames and passwords. And what these guys do when they get that information is they start banging on all the other popular websites to see if you have been using the same email address which you probably are and the same password which you shouldn't be and now they're into other aspects of your digital life uh, also with one password besides just storing and filling your uh, login information for websites you also have the capability to generate just random passwords for different things so for example i generate just standalone passwords for say encrypting hard drives uh, and they're stored there so i don't have to remember it and i'm Make sure that the password is secure. You can save credit card information, bank account information, uh, wireless network login details. Uh, and one of my favorite features, profiles, which allows you to quickly fill out a web form with your typical information, first, last name, email address, mailing address. And you can save several of those. So depending on the context, you know, maybe you want to use your personal email address when you're signing up for, you know, Netflix. But when you're doing business stuff, you want to use your business email to sign up for, let's say, Trello or something like that. So also you have that capability. So it's not just passwords, but that's the premise behind the service. One of the questions that my wife asked me was, Michael, 
iCloud will keep track of my passwords and I can keep my credit card information in iCloud as well. And uh, notes are secure in iOS 9 and greater. So why would I want something like 1Password? And the first thing that comes to mind for me is a point that Demasi brought to my attention when we were talking about this uh, before recording this episode. You know, 1Password has been around since uh, it looks like June 18th, 2006. And that is a lot longer than what Apple has been handling iCloud keychains for. Think about it. We've only had the iPhone. What was it? 2006 or seven that it came out? Demasi, do you remember? I believe it was 2007. We got the first iPhone. Yeah, that's right. We're celebrating the 10 year anniversary this year. So Apple in general hasn't had their fingers in the uh, password arena as long as one password has had their fingers in the password arena. And the one feature that Demasi kind of left out, but it's uh, uh, easily forgotten is my favorite feature because I'm always forgetting them. those software keys. You can save them in one password too. Yeah, software keys. I have a lot of software keys stored in one password. And I do tend to forget about it when I'm telling people about the feature, but then I also sort of think that maybe people don't spend quite as much money on software as I tend to do. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I will admit, Demasi has a habit of spending money on software, and now he's rubbing off on me. Mallory doesn't want me to save my credit card information on 1Password. <laughs> to more elaborate on, on your point, also, you know, yes, 1Password has been in this business for a very long time, uh, whereas we got iCloud Keychain in iOS 9. Uh, is when that feature was introduced. Just to separate, iCloud keychain is completely different from your Max keychain, which has been around, you know, since I, I have no idea how long, but that, that's a totally different feature. We're talking about being able to access your passwords across devices. Uh, we got that feature from Apple with iCloud keychain in iOS 9. But also, another thing that I, I, I point out to people when they say that, I feel that iCloud is a good starting point for people who really don't understand why they need to start storing their passwords. Uh, it's a good starting point because it's free, but it's near, nowhere near as fully featured as something like 1Password. Uh, you don't have the easy access uh, and controls of being able to change passwords, uh, being able to update passwords, as well as storing that additional type of information that can be stored in one password besides your uh, just your login information or your credit card information. And I'll give you an example. I use two factor authentication on, well, just about everything that takes it. But I'm going to use Google here in this example. So. You know, we'll, we'll talk about two factor in another episode, but essentially I need two pieces of information to get into my Google account. One is my email address and my password that's automatically filled. And yes, iCloud could do that for me. The second piece of that though is that I need a six digit code that is generated. Now, one password will store that information and generate those codes so I can peek right there in one password and get the six digit code and copy and paste it. Uh, on the Mac, it will actually automatically save it to your clipboard after filling in a site that has a uh, second factor code attached to it. But the big thing is with Google and you're signing into different applications with your Google account or signing into different services uh, with your Google account, let's say Fantastical on the Mac, for example, you need what's called a application specific password. And in that case, that means you have a, a, you know, usually around about a 16 to 20 uh, character long password that is generated just for that application. Well, oftentimes we find ourselves having to reset a device or reinstall an application. And I hate having to go to Google and generate those one time passwords. So in the case of Fantastical on the Mac, for example, I generated a password and I went and saved it in one password as an additional password. I was able to label it Fantastical one time password. So the next time I have to reinstall Fantastical, instead of generating a whole new password, I just go copy it out of there, paste it in. That's something I cannot do with iCloud Keychain. That is amazing. I didn't even think about that. And I'm sitting here thinking, well, and we'll talk about two-factor next week, but I've got backup codes for Dropbox and Google Drive, my two primary cloud services. And it's good to have those backup codes, but often those backup codes are saved in a text document on your computer. And sometimes you have them saved on those services that you're trying to get into. So uh, that's that's awesome that you can save those in one password. Now, the one thing that I love about one password, and I don't know if they've always done this, you'll have to let us know or not, is that they also don't require you to just have your email address and your password, but they require you to have a security key. And this security key is random letters and numbers that you have to 
use to verify your identity when you're logging into a device for the first time. And uh, that, that makes it very nice because even if I guessed the one password, because like most people, your one password is probably that one password that the sites you haven't had to update your password on in years still uses. So if they get hacked, people know what that one password is. But if they don't have your email and they don't have your security key, they still can't get into your one password account. Did they have that before they switched to their new billing model? That came along with the uh, subscription model. So the one password for families and teams that they now offer. And prior prior years before they had their online service, uh, you would sync your one password vault either through Dropbox uh, or iCloud directly. So essentially, once you had access to your device and uh, downloaded, installed one password and logged in with your one password, you will point it to the vault. Uh, and then that would, you know, prompt you to enter the password for that. So, no, that is a new feature. And they, they relate that to sort of a, a multi-factor or a second factor authentication method, because you're right. If you do not have that security key, you're not getting into your account. I don't care if it's you. There's no other way for you to get into your account if you lose that key. Uh, so I, I definitely I have mine backed up in several different places because <laughs> me too. And, and I think it's important it, to, to make this clear. You can't get into your account and they can't get you into your account either no. so definitely download that pdf file that they give you when you set up your account and save it in more than one place so you can get to it now Demasi, let's you mentioned it a time or two let's talk a bit about the pricing and the structure of how it changed because one factor that you glossed over is you had to install one password in the past on all of your devices but not only did you have to install it but you had to purchase it for all of your devices and that's why i didn't invest into one password in the past but then when they brought out these new pricing models i'm like i gotta give it a try especially with the free 30-day trial which you can get at your own pay.com slash dm7 so uh demasi the prices now are 2.99 per month that's billed annually it's 4.99 per month billed annually for a family and 3.99 per user per month billed annually. Uh, how, how do you see that those prices com compare to what you used to have to pay to get invested into 1Password? In all honesty, starting with that individual plan at $299 billed annually, we're going to round that up and roughly say it's about 36 bucks. So that's cheaper than one license of 1Password for either the Mac or either Windows. In the past, you would have to buy, you know, as Michael said, the applications for each platform. They did offer a cross-platform bundle license for Windows and Mac that was you know somewhat cheaper than purchasing them individually but you would also have to purchase the application for your iphone uh at one point in time very very long time ago when i first started using one password there was a separate app for iphone and ipad uh before they went universal compared to what you used to pay uh for one password for individual is definitely a better deal because you get access to all of the apps on all of the platforms for free for that one time subs for that subscription fee yearly and one password is one of these companies that used to sell their applications they still do sell them standalone if you really don't want to do a subscription you can still buy the standalone application from them they did keep that around for those people that want to continue to control their entire password management process from front to back uh, however one password is one of these companies that also they will release a new version let's say version 5 came out uh, that would be a, a upgrade pricing if you were a previous owner or a brand new purchase if you were not you would probably have that version five and all subsequent updates for about a year and a half maybe two years before they went to version six again you're spending again upgrade pricing or uh, another brand new purchase if you were not a previous owner so to me the subscription model makes a lot more sense now where it really gets interesting is for the families uh, we're going to talk about teams more but for the families real quick you're paying five bucks uh, per month for a year. So you're looking at $60 and I actually think there may be a, a, a bit of a discount in there somewhere. Uh, but even if you're paying 60 bucks, that gives you five users inside your family account that you can have. So that's you plus four other people that now have access to one password on any device that they use they're secure you can help them become more secure if they're a little hesitant to you know make those moves and, and do the proper security practices and you essentially get all of the apps everywhere with some nice sharing features it makes it very easy to share passwords amongst your family 
uh, and they get all these features that we've been talking about. And Michael, I believe you're a Teams user. I have a Teams account for business. This is where I feel like you're still coming out ahead because one, you're, you're paying per individual user, but however, you have so much more control over the access levels. You can invite people and only give them read access. You can invite people and only give them write access. You can invite somebody and only set them up as a recovery user. Uh, and this is what you want to use if you are an independent person, independent business owner, where you're contracting with people or hiring people out for particular jobs. Instead of shooting them your password across the Internet over email or text message, uh, you know, doing crazy things like that, what you can do is invite them to your one password team for the time that they're going to be working for you. Pay for their subscription. When they're done, you can remove their access to your data while they'll have access to it while they're working for you. You can ensure that they don't have the ability to edit it export it or any number of ways that they could try to get your information out you can control that level of access uh, for your company and it makes sure everybody working for you is doing the right thing when it comes to security no more sticky notes on the monitor with the password to the email account and most importantly when you end up having to because contractors come and go i've been there done that worked with them and and worked with some and lost some but when you have to change things around no longer emailing three or four or five or 10 20 30 different people hey here's the new password you just update it i have a vault called my personal social media and that has all of my social media links in there the people who need access to that have access to it i've got my personal vault which no one has access to but me and Mallory because I'm setting it up on her phone just in case she needs it. So we've got my personal vault. And then the other one that we have is client logins. That's for any of my client's social media or my client's website, uh, which makes it really easy because I know that the tech guy needs access to my client information, but only the VA needs access to my social media. So the tech guy doesn't need to worry about Facebook accounts or YouTube accounts or Twitter accounts. So I love one password for teams recently switched from family to teams uh, simply for the ability to give people specific privileges. And I, I think that's the number one reason why you should switch from family to teams if you're, if you're currently a, on families or why you should just jump on teams. If you're thinking about it is if you need the ability to manage the access that people have to your password information and you want to quickly update that information, and stay secure, then definitely look at 1Password. There will be a link for 1Password at youronpay.com slash DM7. Demasi, do you have anything else you want to add about 1Password for teams, family, or personal? I would just say take a good look at it. As Mike mentioned uh, in passing earlier, it's a free 30-day trial. It, it doesn't hurt you to go out there, give it a try, see how it works for you. Uh, we'll have, as Mike said, we'll have links at youronpay.com slash DM7. Go give it a try. It's a 30-day free trial. See if it works for you because... In the days that we're living in right now, the times that we're living in now with all the breaches that we constantly hear about, your data is at risk if you don't take the steps to protect it. Definitely is. And Demasi, I'm going to get with you after this podcast so we can talk about the profile features. And on Thursday, if you're listening to the podcast, you'll hear me setting this up so I can show you how I'm going to be using it after I talk with Demasi. And uh, we'll explain that more on that episode. So with that... I'm at Payone on Twitter, and he's at Demasi, D-A-M-A-S-H-E. And we'll talk to you guys next week on Demasi and Michael Just Talking Tech, all about two-factor authentication. You've been listening to Your Own Pay Podcast. If you've enjoyed today's episode, visit yourownpay.com slash cast for exclusive content and to contact us today. We're eager to hear your thoughts and about how you're making this podcast your own. Thanks for listening. We'll be back soon. The Your Own Pay Podcast, yourownpay.com.